To help deal with the doctor shortage, Kaiser Permanente has officially teamed up with the University of Hawaii John Burns School of Medicine to become a teaching partner. Today, it pledged $800,000 in scholarships for five incoming medical students. It's a long road to becoming a doctor in the U.S. You may not know that across the country, thousands of medical students are starting their residency uh, today at hospitals that they were matched up with earlier this spring. This morning, we talked with UH, uh, UH's Director of Graduate Medical Education, Dr. Lee Wenkensei-Holam, about the efforts to grow our pool of doctors. We are happy to, you know, report that uh, from the University of Hawaii, of course, we graduated uh, over 70 students this past May, uh, and they all began their residency training um, across the country um, today, and um, about a third of them have stayed here in Hawaii, and so, um, you know, patients and staff and families will will be seeing, um, you know, a new crop of, of resident physicians, uh, but we also have fellows. So for us, we have about 80 uh, in total new uh, residents or fellows starting in our uh, different hospitals uh, and health systems. Um, And our programs include uh, programs in family medicine, internal medicine, OBGYN, orthopedics, pathology, pediatrics, psychiatry, surgery, but we also have fellowships in addiction psychiatry, a new one in addiction medicine, which is highly needed, uh, cardiovascular disease or cardiology, and we have fellowships in geriatrics, child and adolescent psychiatry, uh, maternal fetal medicine, which is the high-risk OB, uh, and also um, complex family planning, as well as neonatology sports medicine and surgical critical care. So um, our fellowships are, you know, and our programs are really designed to help meet uh, the needs for Hawaii and to train um, physicians, you know, that uh, where hopefully they will return. If they go on for fellowship, they'll return back to Hawaii or, you know, they will stay. Um, so all of our programs do a good job of making sure to select our residents and fellows that really do have a commitment to take care for our diverse patient population and to um, really help address some of the different health challenges and health disparities that exist in many of our populations. Now, I I know uh, we were talking to a number of um, hospital administrators, and I think one of them um, had uh, mentioned that I think we've got a shortage of, it's like 400 doctors a year or something to that effect. Yeah, actually, it, it, depending on how you slice the data, the number actually ranges uh, in the 500 to 700. Um, yeah, depending on, it, it's worse on neighbor islands and worse in certain specialties. But there, yes, overall, there is a shortage. Uh, there's a high need for primary care uh, throughout the state, and whether that's internal medicine or family medicine, um, pediatrics is also a primary care specialty. Uh, there's a need for mental health uh, providers. Uh, psychiatrists are really at a huge shortage area uh, in the neighbor islands, and in particular, child psychiatry. Um, so really, that, that 400 number is conservative. Yes. Yep. And let's talk about the neighbor islands because, you know, I I recall, you know, at one time uh, hearing from somebody that, gosh, you got to pray that you don't break your arm and end up in the uh, ER uh, on the big island because Mm. they didn't have a, you know, orthopedic surgeon there in the ER uh, to be able to handle that. And likely you would be sent over to Honolulu. Yeah, so luckily that um, part has has been resolved, but but it is still a, a high need area. Um, you know, we know from the physicians' workforce studies that our medical school uh, does every year that many of the physicians are getting older. Um, and uh, but there are some specialties that actually so endocrinology, uh, which is kind of the hormones, really really complex diabetes, thyroid, you know the, those would be cared for by an endocrinologist, uh, rheumatologist, which are folks uh, that take care of the very complicated uh, rheumatoid arthritis or lupus or other connective tissue disorder patients, um, even lung specialists, pulmonologists. Uh, they will often fly from Honolulu to the neighbor islands and 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 provide care there, um, you know, once or twice a month, depending uh, on the need. Um, but increasingly, telehealth is being utilized, which is great. Uh, and for some of the, uh, for for actually many of the conditions, um, even for surgery. Uh, telemedicine is really a growing opportunity. Uh, so for surgery, obviously, you need to you know have a surgeon do the actual surgery. But before 
the visit, uh, things could be planned <clears throat> and, uh, you know, good discussions with the primary care physician on the neighbor island to make sure that everything is optimized and ideal um, so that then if the patient does have to be uh, flown to Honolulu for surgery, um, uh, and usually these would be a much more complicated surgery or, you know, uh, say a, a surgery where someone has cancer, for example. Uh, those would likely need to be done in Honolulu, uh, or a pediatric surgery um, would need to be done in Honolulu. But the surgeons are starting uh, to, uh, and really wanting to do more telemedicine with the um, neighbor island providers um, to brief before, and that again helps to optimize the the, um, you know, the outcomes of the surgery, and then certainly for afterwards, follow-up, a lot can be done. So whereas, you know, five years ago, folks would have to really fly to Oahu and stay in Oahu for quite a long time, uh, now with the advent of telemedicine, um, some of those, those times will be a little bit less. And what are we doing to encourage more of our young people to get into medicine, uh, because the 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 time, uh, you know, which <laughs> it's a long road, you yeah. know, to get to be a doctor, and the cost is yeah. staggering. Sure. Sure. So um, there are what we call pipeline programs, um, which really start in, in the elementary schools in some areas and definitely in the middle schools and the high schools. So uh, the first thing is really to try to encourage um, children to go into STEM fields or the science, technology, engineering, and math. So that's collectively called STEM. And so there's a lot of uh, programs uh, done not only by the medical school, but by other partners within the University of Hawaii um, to really try to improve you know, STEM education, uh, and and then in the uh, there are some specific um, outreach programs that our medical school and medical students do to uh, some of the um, intermediate schools and some of the high schools. Uh, we work with the health academies, which are now um, increasing in, in popularity uh, in many of our public schools. Um, and there are numerous opportunities in the summer for uh, students uh, to come to the medical school and do get a you know short like one week or two week experience, various different things. Um, our health system partners uh, offer summer experiences as well uh, for folks that are interested in medicine. Um, and importantly is also the mentoring and the um, uh, the mentoring piece. And so for high school students and even for college students, um, you know, having great grades is not the only criteria, right? There's a lot of other uh, things that make one competitive for medical school, including um, do they really have an idea of what the field of medicine is like? You know, have they had the opportunity to shadow or to work in a hospital or work in a physician's office? Um, you know, are they community uh, minded? Are they, you know, collaborators? Um, do they have that human touch and that human element, which is so very important? Uh, can they think in teams? Things like that. So those experiences are really important to have. And so we do have um, guidance and mentoring set up for uh, those students that are interested um, in health careers as, as, as well as medicine. And you are encouraging a lot of the Native Hawaiians. Absolutely, absolutely. And in fact, um, there are specific programs for Native Hawaiian students and, Native, and schools with large populations of Native Hawaiians. Um, but many of our programs actually are targeting um, uh, schools out in Leeward, Oahu as well. Um, and so really all many of our um, uh, uh, populations that have more minority um, ethnic minority populations because we know we have we have an overall shortage of physicians but when you look at the breakdown by ethnicity in comparison to Hawaii's population we definitely do have shortage of Native Hawaiians and Filipino physicians and, and others um, you know and certainly with our um, many uh, Asian subpopulations here uh, many of whom uh, do not speak English as their primary language then it's also important to you know see if we have students that are very interested in medicine and that um, are also able to speak another language then that's you know, obviously uh, really great for patients. I did have the opportunity to speak to one of your um, uh, recent graduates uh, at the medical school, and she came from the Philippines. Mm. And historically, we have tapped a lot of the medical personnel uh, from the Philippines, whether they're nurses or aides, you know, because they do have a healthcare system, you know, they're in that country. And some of those hospitals are, are quite good. Oh, absolutely. 
Yeah, the care in, in many of the hospitals are, are really quite excellent. And so, I mean, we have students who speak one of several, you know, different dialects, which is huge. And while the great majority of residents um, and fellows are graduates of U.S. medical schools, um, there, there are opportunities for very highly qualified folks from international medical schools to apply. That was Dr. Lee Wenkensehul Lum, a graduate medical education director as well as professor of family medicine and community health at the University of Hawaii Medical School.